Hello and welcome back to Super Data Science's custom chart tutorial series for Tableau. In today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at Likert scale charts. Quick bit of background. Dr. Rensis Likert was an American social psychologist who's credited with inventing what's known as the Likert scale. The Likert scale is very familiar to anybody who's ever taken a survey, is the idea that you can rank your responses or your feelings from 1 to 5 or from 1 to 4. It really varies depending on what people present in surveys. But you can rank things from strongly agree to strongly disagree. This can be reversed, this can be shown in, again, different numbers or different orders. The thing is, it provides a numerical way to really gauge how you're feeling and your response to either a product or a service. Here's another quick example. Indicate how satisfied you are with the following. You have a list of services and a list of characteristics of a service, and then you have everything from very unsatisfied all the way through to satisfied. The Likert scale is very common in survey data, and as an analyst, it is very likely that you will run into a survey or a survey data at some point in your career, so this is a fantastic tool to be used. Now, it's important to note and acknowledge at this point that visualizing survey data is really the specialty of Tableau Zen Master Steve Wexler. Steve has his own fantastic blog, which I recommend. It's called Data Revelations. But he also came to Tableau's official blog and wrote about how to visualize sentiment and inclination, demoing his technique for Likert scale charts, which we're going to be looking at today. Like I said before, Likert scale charts are a fantastic way to show response to survey data. The historical way to show it was really a stacked bar chart with 100% for every single question. But Steve had the innovation to make it a divergent stacked bar chart making it a lot easier to read, especially for people who have never seen this before. So for each individual question, you still have your stacked bar chart, but it diverges or it's offset based off of which side it shades towards. So in an example where you're looking at unsatisfactory to satisfactory, you can easily tell that this bottom group is more unsatisfactory because it has more values below the center line. And this group right here that has ranked higher scores towards the top because it has more values above your center line. This is the chart that we're going to be building at today. There are multiple versions of it. You can use, again, the stacked bar chart. But for our case, we're going to be using the divergent stacked bar chart, similar to this one, except with five different categories. Looking at the data for our tutorial today, we have a sample hotel survey that's been sent out, and we have the respondents that came back. We have 482 different respondents from people who stayed at our hotel. We have 10 questions that they were asked. And then we have their relative ranking one through five on what they responded. Along with that, we have the response IDs and we have some demographic information. So we know what country, what gender, and what age each respondent was. And then we also have metadata. This is another important point that Steve Wexler points out. When you're working with survey data, a lot of times it's going to come back with just this question ID. So your visualization can show up and say, OK, the average score for question one was three. But what does that actually mean? You need to have some information that puts in plain English what each question means. So for this, we've added in the category that the question belongs to and the specific question that we can then have access to on a visualization so it's easier to read and easier to work with. Now that we have this data, let's go over to Tableau and connect to it so we can start our visualization process. So first, we're going to connect to our data. Just look at an Excel file. We have our hotel survey data. Open that up. And we have the three tabs that we're used to. We have our responses, the metadata, and the demographic info. We'll bring in the responses first, and then we'll join that to the demographic information. This is just going to match over based off of response ID. And you'll notice that for each respondent ID, we now have country, gender, and age. We don't need that in there twice, so we'll hide this. Now at this point, we have data that reads very well for a human. So for this first respondent, who's 29, male and from the US, these were his answers for questions 1 through 10. The thing is, Tableau does not work well with multiple columns like this. It likes it formatted in a database format. So we're going to select our 10 questions, and we're going to pivot the data. We pivoted the data. We can rename this as our question ID. You see it's question 1. You can scroll down a bit. Sorry, it was question 10. Now we have question 1, question 2, etc. Then coming here, this is actually going to be the score that each individual respondent gave. Now that we have question ID available as a column, we can actually come over to our question metadata and join on that question ID field. Make sure you use question ID and not any of your old columns. So we have question ID that can join to question ID on our metadata. And that will bring in the metadata that we're looking for. We now have category and we now have question or the plain English question description for each question ID. Now we have a redundant field that we can come in and we can hide. And we have our data ready for our visualization. 
Now, the trick with Linkert scale charts is the fact that we're building a stacked bar chart with percent of totals, but these percent of totals are offset from zero, they have negative values in them, if you look down here you see those negatives, and they have positives. Basically what this means is we can't use the built-in table calculation to make our percent of total, so we're going to have to do this manually, with our own table calculations. Now it's important to acknowledge at this point that a lot of the table calculation help came from Joe Mako, a Tableau authority on table calculations. So, looking at our view, we want to come in and we want to build our own table calculations. The thing with table calculations is they can go wrong very quickly. A best practice in Tableau is to go in and build a cross tab. A cross tab is just a table of numbers, and it's a very easy way to see exactly what your table calculations are doing to make sure they give you what you want. So we're going to look at question, and then we'll bring in each individual score. I'm going to change this to discrete, and now we have each of our question and the score of one through five. At this point, in the interest of readability, it may be better to create a calculated field called answer. We use a case statement on score, and we'll say when it's one, then we know this is actually very unsatisfactory. When it was two, then it was satisfactory. Sorry. It was unsatisfactory. When it was three, then it was neutral. When it was four, the response was satisfactory. And when it was five, then we know it was very satisfactory. That was a bit of a pain to type, but now we don't have to worry about aliasing things. Now we don't have to worry about this score value being a number and then having to change it to discrete. Now, with this calculated field, we have a discrete dimension available, and we can drag it up here to score, and you'll see we have neutral through very unsatisfactory. That isn't actually what we want. We want it to be sorted according to what our scores were. So if we come down and look at our score, just making the minimum of that score, click OK, and now we have each question, and then we have the answers from very unsatisfactory all the way through to very satisfactory. Great. Now we want to look at the number of responses that we got. If we sum up just the number of records, you notice that for each question and answer, we have a value. So in other words, we had 19 people that said that amenities were very unsatisfactory, all the way to 201 who said very satisfactory. This is one quick and easy way to look at our data. It's not exactly the best visualization, but it gives you the right information. Really quick, you can look through amenities and say, hey, you did very well, all things considered, but check-in, check-out experience was a little bit negative. Now that we've seen the number of records, the next step is to come in and figure out the number of responses that come through that are actually below this dividing line. So you notice you have your lowest category negative, and then you have half of neutral. So we need to come in and use our two lowest categories, very unsatisfactory and unsatisfactory, and then bring in half of our neutral as well. So we'll create a calculated field called negative scores, and the syntax will look like this. If score is less than three, then one, we're gonna wanna count it. Else if our score is equal to three, then we're gonna want it to be 0 0.5. I'll explain more on that in a second. Else we're gonna make it zero, so we don't wanna count it, end. What this is doing is looking at each answer. Again, answer is just a proxy for score. And if it's lower than three, so if it scored poorly, it's gonna be a one, so we wanna count what's happening. If score is equal to three, then we only want half. This is true because we're trying to split this middle bar, the neutral one, along positive or negative. When you have neutral responses in a survey, you don't actually know which side of the bar they were on, so it's best to divide it in half across your dividing line, so you're not unfairly weighting one side to the other. Other than that, it's going to be zero, because we don't want to count satisfactory or very satisfactory as a negative score. So if we bring a negative score out to our view, you'll see that it's doing exactly what we need. We have our 19 from our original ones, and we have our 14, and then we have half of our neutral. Following this, we're going to want to be creating a percent of total for our negative values, so we're going to need what our total negative scores are for each question and by summing up all of these answers. So we're going to create another calculated field called our total negative scores, and this is just going to be the table calculation total sum of negative scores. Now in terms of default table calculation, you can leave it on automatic, but in our case, we know we're going to want it to sum up across answer. So we'll bring in total negative scores, and you'll see that it's summing up this 19, this 14, and this 12 and a half to give us 45 and a half across amenities, 365 and a half across check-in, check-out, et cetera, et cetera. 
you'll notice we could actually have this calculate coming over and compute using paying down and it gives us the exact same thing but in this case we want to keep it with the default that we set we want to make sure that it stays on answer which is very important especially if the view ends up changing or if people add in different fields then it will adjust correctly and accordingly next when we're creating percent of totals we now have the percent of total for just the negative values but we're also going to need the percent of total for the entire view so for the entirety of this bar coming in we'll create a new calculated field this will just be our total scores so in other words counting the number of scores that exist or the number of responses that exist so this is going to be total sum of just number of records again we're going to come in and we're going to always want these to be according to answer bring in total scores and it ends up being 482 it ends up doing this for every single row because we have a nice clean data set where every single person who responded answered all 10 questions after this we now need to create a calculated field that shows the offset so if you look at these bars in this view you'll see that product H starts at roughly 50 percent product A 45 product D around 30 what we're telling it is basically where we want Tableau to start drawing this line so we can then build our bar chart off of it. So because we're starting, we'll call it our Gantt start. Again, I said we're going to be using a Gantt chart to replicate that stacked bar chart. And this calculation is going to be our negative total negative scores divided by our total scores. Coming back to our view, we're no longer working with positive data, we want to move it to our negative, so we have our count of negative scores, our total for each question, and then we make it negative, so we offset it from that zero, and then we divide it by the total across this entire bar, which basically gives us a percent value that we can then offset by to create the starting point for our chart. Coming down to our measures pane, we now have our Gantt start available, drag that into our view, which is going to come up because this is going to be a percentage we're going to change the number format so it shows up nicely let's do one percentage point to make sure that it doesn't get a too cluttered and you'll see that we now have our offset from our zero so for this first one it's negative 9.4 percent so it only moves over a little bit that makes sense because we have a lot of positive values for this check in check out it's negative 75.8 or in other words it's going to be moved a significant amount to the left which also makes sense because we have a lot of negative or neutral values that we're going to have to work with so now that we have our Gantt start, we're going to need to tell Tableau how wide we want each bar to be. So we're going to create a calculated field that's called our percent of total sizing. This one is just going to be our standard percent of total calculation. So we have the number of records divided by our total scores. This is going to give us for each individual value the number of records that are in that bar divided by the total that are in the entire bar. Just give us that straight percent. Since we know again this is going to be a percent, we'll change our default properties over to our percentage, one decimal point. We'll bring that one in. It's giving us the good sizing that we need. Now that we have our Gantt start and our percent of total sizing available, we're going to need to do one more calculated field that draws each individual Gantt line after this first one. So we have our Gantt start. We have a percent of total that will size things correctly, but we need to draw individual Gantt lines that will tell Tableau when to restart so we can have our coloring be correct. So we're going to come in, create a calculated field. We'll call it Gantt percent, and it's going to use the following formula. Previous value, Gantt start, plus zero null of lookup, the percent of total sizing, minus one. Now. This calculation doesn't make a lot of sense right now, but give me a second. We're going to have it according to the answer, like all, of the, like all of our other table calculations. I'll bring it in, change its default properties really quick, and then I'll walk through what the formula is doing so we can understand it together. So coming back into our formula, previous value is a table calculation that looks to the calculation that you're actually creating yourself. So it looks to the previous value of Gantt percent. The thing is, for this first row, we don't have a previous value to work with, which is what the input is that basically says, look to the previous value of Gantt percent. If not, use this field, so use Gantt start. So for this first one, it says, I want the previous value. We don't have it, so I'm going to use negative 9.4. And then we're going to add the lookup 
of the percent of total sizing minus one, basically saying, also, look to the previous row. So pretend of percent of total sizing, you go to the previous row, there's no value, so it returns a null. The zero null returns a zero, so your previous value on this first row has the Gantt start, minus 9.4 brings it over. For this second row, it says, look at the previous value, so negative 9.4, then add in the percent of total sizing. We have a 3.9%, so negative 9.4 plus 3.9 gives us our 5.5, and it continues to do that all the way down the chart. This is the end of the cross tab, and is actually the last of the calculated fields that we're going to be doing for building the base for our Linkert scale chart. So give yourself a high five, a pat on the back, whatever works best for you. We'll rename this cross tab, and we'll jump over to start building our visualization. So we'll drag out our question, and we'll drag out our Gantt percent, which is going to form the basis for things, and it's going to break immediately. If you hover over this, it says it requires a field that is missing. If you remember in our cross tab, we calculated everything over answer, so we'll need to bring answer into our view. We'll put it on color, and then we'll change it from our automatic to our Gantt bar chart, and you'll see that all of a sudden we're getting what we want in terms of each individual line showing a different starting point for each answer. We have neutral, we have satisfactory, we have unsatisfactory. Remember before we had to resort our answer to make it be in the correct order, we have to do the same thing here. So we use score, minimum of score, and now we have very unsatisfactory to very satisfactory. We can bring in our percent of total sizing, put that on our sizing, and now we're starting to have a really good looking Linkert scale chart. A couple things to change really quick. Right now it's using the automatic palette, which is designed to make things seem very different. What we want to do is actually trick Tableau into using something that looks like it's standard blue-orange diverging for a continuous measure. So we'll come down to very satisfactory, use the dark orange, Unsatisfactory, we'll use the lighter. Neutral, we'll use the gray. Satisfactory, a nice light blue. Very satisfactory, a deep blue. Hit OK, and now we are showing our chart. It's looking very good. Come down to our axis right here. We know that we can go from negative 100% to 100%. So rather than allowing it to adjust, we're just going to fix it at that point. So now our chart will be static around that zero. And you'll see for each question, we have our range of values that show how our survey responses are spread and a general feeling on whether they were positive or whether they were negative. As a last way to top this off, it's nice to look at this view which shows the breakdown of individual answers inside each question, but it's also know the, nice to know the overall Likert scale score. So we're going to come here and we're going to take the average of these responses. It's basically averaging the one through five to tell us how well each individual question did. At first, it's going to look a little bit weird because Tableau thinks I want to make another Gantt bar chart. So I'm going to come down and actually make this a circle. We'll up the size a little bit. And then we'll drag our average score down to label. Come here inside our label, change the alignment to the center. And then we'll right click here, format on the numbers. You can see we now have two decimal points. And now we come up, make it a dual axis. We have to go in and fix this axis. So right click, edit the axis fix it because we know our scores only vary between 1 and 5. And now we have this awesome dot overlaid on top of our stack bar chart that we've made, our diverging stack bar chart, that shows us the summary for each individual value. So now we can unclick show header so we can hide our axes. We can then use our demographic information to slice it by country. We can slice it by gender. We can also slice it by category. Slicing by category actually shows a really cool story and a really good analysis that is, we'll just end with as a quick example of how these charts can really be used to strengthen your organization's usefulness of its surveys. So we have our Likert scale chart right here. And we have each individual bar. We see for the room category, we're doing pretty well. People don't really like the design, but overall we have scores above three, that dividing line that we want. Our value also is doing really well, 3.2 through 4.19 but we have a clear use case where we need to go in and help with our staff. Our check-in, check-out experience is the worst. Friendliness of staff is also rated poorly, as is our timeliness. So there you go. Just a quick analysis showing the potential of what a Likert chart can do for you and for your organization. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Feel free to reach out to us on superdatascience.com with any questions or any suggestions for future charts. Thank you so much.